Are the next generation combat helmets a huge step forward or a big old hype train to absolutely nowhere? For the first time ever, my brain bucket claims to be able to protect me from incoming rifle rounds, which is absolutely crazy if that's true. So apparently there's a giant misconception floating around out there that soldiers wear helmets to protect against bullets, when that's never really been the case before. The fact is, Helmets are mostly worn to prevent non-combat related injuries that us lower enlisted are famous for getting in. Since the inception of the ballistic helmet in the year 2000, they've only really been rated to stop small pistol calibers and tiny pieces of metal shrapnel from explosives, which statistically speaking is actually your biggest threat to your head on the battlefield. And yes, it's true there are some isolated stories where the old ACH did successfully deflect a rifle round here and there if the stars aligned just right and the angle of impact was perfect. But to be clear, stopping a direct hit was never in the cards before, until now, with this next generation eye hips and future assault shell technology helmets. So what changed in the past 10 years that allowed for this major advancement where headgear can finally stop rifle calibers? To me, this advancement once again opens up the whole debate about what's the right place for headgear in the military? When should we wear patrol caps versus ballistic helmets? And is this new tech still unrealistically expensive to be used in any meaningful way? Are the biggest advancements with this headgear possibly not even related to the ballistic protection? For instance, the new communications and hearing advancements here are insane. When I wore them, I felt like I was being given super hearing powers. Wait, hey, I can hear you talking shit about me over there. Is that you again, Specialist Carl? In 2009, Ops Corps Gentex released the first ever NIJ Level 3 helmet that could stop a large 762 by 51 millimeter round flying at 2,400 feet per second. By taking advantage of new advancements in thermoplastics, instead of being made entirely out of woven Kevlar, the iHips was crafted from ultra high molecular weight polyethylene fibers. But I didn't join the infantry to learn anything good with maths, so what does that actually translate to? The new materials give the helmet a 35% improved protection rating while being 8 to 25% lighter overall. But the first worry that everyone has when they hear about polymer-based military equipment is what temperature is it going to start to fail at? Will this helmet simply melt if I leave it out in the sun for too long? According to open source information, the next gen helmet is rated for negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit, also known as freezing my off temperature, and up to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. The hottest temperature on planet Earth was reported in Kuwait City last year at 127.7 degrees Fahrenheit. So even planet Earth can't defeat this helmet. Nice try, global warming. Better luck next year. So why did the US Army spend over $8 million trying to develop this next generation helmet in the first place? It's because they ran a study of all the combat injuries between 2005 and 2009, and they found that 28% of all injuries were to the head or neck. In addition to that, they found that since the beginning of the wars, over 400,000 TBI head injuries were reported by soldiers, which we now know that leads to serious mental and physical health problems down the road. Obviously, the IHIPS was quickly snatched up and put into operation by the special forces in Afghanistan. They wanted to see if these paper claims could actually hold up in combat. The new Fast Helmets deployment to Afghanistan was a huge success, leading to 2019 when Gentex scored a $95 million defense deal with SOCOM to produce an unspecified amount of helmets over the next five years. This would break the historical trend that recently soldiers were just tossing their Kevlar dome pieces aside. British troops often patrolled without a helmet to appear less intimidating to local populations because the prevailing thought is why would I wear an uncomfortable, hot, heavy helmet if it's unlikely to stop a bullet anyway? In the past, there was a separate applique shield up armored piece that could be attached directly on top of the base helmet to protect against rifle rounds, but it added a whole extra two pounds. That doesn't sound like much, but it's a lot for your neck, especially on a long patrol, unless you've got that sweet neck swole workout device. And in 2015, the US Army developed a new machine and process that could produce a seamless uniform helmet that no longer needed the applique. Robert Delilio was the team lead on the project and he said, quote, the results far exceed our expectations as we were getting stops well above the requirement and at 40% less weight than the current capability, the results were replicated with another batch of prototype helmets, confirming that we had developed a new capability to significantly increase soldiers protection. The real question here is how modular is this thing? And the answer is the most modular. You can now strap on a mandible piece that can be rated for pistol or rifle rounds and a shrapnel ballistic eye shield, 
The full face mask didn't really interfere or cover any of my field of view. I felt like I had my full situational awareness, which isn't saying much considering my level of ADD. The added weight of the two pieces was negligible, I could barely tell the difference. This has always been the single biggest limiting factor for increased head protection in the past. The Army could add protection, but with the technology in pre-2015, it required doubling the weight. I could see this full face mask setup being especially useful for soldiers who are in the gunner position on a truck. It's ideal for troops who are up there in the hatch with the 50 cal and the main part of them that's exposed is their head. They're not as concerned with looking around corners in a building where you might want to prioritize mobility and field of vision. Currently, the IHIPS helmet is mostly worn by Special Forces operators in the US Army because of how cost prohibitive the new technology is. These things go for around 1200 bucks a pop, whereas the old ACH is more like 350 for comparison. But you have to remember that old ACH was originally just a Special Forces helmet. So as of 2019, the IHIPS is slowly replacing the ECH and the ACH for US Army units like the 82nd Airborne. Brigadier General Anthony Potts said, quote, We've done enough testing to know that it absolutely meets the current level of threat, but we also know it exceeds that. Now it's about getting more companies that can actually press the mold. So we're gonna see more regular units equipped with this helmet as it becomes cheaper and more factories are integrated with the new machining process. But a huge part of the next generation combat helmet has nothing to do with its ballistic protection. It's the communications upgrade. The soldiers have struggled for a long time to find a solution where they could hear their buddies through their headset radio, while at the same time being able to hear the sounds clearly directly around them. Up until now, you've had one headphone on, one off, and it just sucked. So I tried out the new combination ear protection slash communication earplugs, and honestly, they were insane. This is what I meant by it gives you super hearing abilities. It felt like wearing combat AirPods. I put the earplugs in, which they have a wire snake through them, and then I plugged that earplug wire into the battery powered headset, and I could instantly hear clearly from all over the room. The high powered microphone located on the headset was sending me audio from the room straight into my noise canceling earplugs. It also connects to your radio, so you can hear audio from your squad. Sounds are in 3D, so if your battle buddy standing right next to you to your right says, Hua, then you hear that sound from your right earphone. And if that isn't unironically Hua, I don't know what is. Another big problem in the military is hearing protection. Tinnitus is a massive problem with everyone I know. You have constant ringing in your ears, especially when it's completely silent. As long as I'm just hearing ringing and not voices in my ears, then that's okay, right? Regular soldiers have had to choose between plastic earplugs that make it impossible to hear your buddy right next to you, or no earplugs at all, which then you go deaf after a firefight. Whenever there are sounds like gunshots and explosions that are higher than a certain level, the headset automatically brings those down to a safe sound level. This allows you to clearly hear frequencies that are voices while cutting off dangerous loud noises. Legacy systems work differently by cutting off high sounds entirely and sacrificing all sound. So essentially you would go deaf for a quick second instead of forever. So where is the future of combat helmets going to be taking us? Digital wearables is the next step. And all future devices are gonna have these little digital devices on there that monitor your health and activity. Your leadership will now be able to monitor whether you've received any head trauma, which is incredibly useful because a lot of times troops don't want to admit that they've been injured for fear of looking like a liar or a both of which are unacceptable. But good data doesn't lie, which will help back up any of these claims of injuries. Although I would be lying if I didn't admit it's a little bit creepy the thought of my platoon leader one day being able to monitor my heartbeat so they can tell if I'm lying to them about having slept through Firewatch again. One of my biggest gripes with the old ACH from 10 years ago was how uncomfortable a thing was when it sat on my head. Attaching nods on it, the mount would always wiggle and there was a lot of play to it. That's been solved with this new headlock system on the next generation helmet. In the past, nods were mounted through this hole that was screwed through the helmet. Anytime you put a hole in the helmet, you're sacrificing the integrity of the shape. So now they machine the thing as one piece so you don't have to drill a hole through it. The shape of the helmet, the material of the helmet, and the pads themselves are all made to dissipate heat. Before, it would be disgusting when you took your helmet off. These new helmets reduce your IR signature by cutting down on all the heat that gets trapped up there. The future of combat helmets are gonna be lighter, better protected, and the only limit is gonna be how many G-forces your neck and brain can withstand from the force of a round hitting it, even if it doesn't penetrate the armor. 
These advancements open up a whole conversation and debate around what is the correct place for headgear in the military? Who should be wearing a heavily armored full face shield and who should just be wearing a patrol cap? These are questions that we're gonna have to examine again.